Hi everyone, I'm science illustrator and artist Matthias Lannis. Today's demonstration will focus on painting seashells in watercolor inspired by a series of sunset paintings artist explorer Tony Foster painted in the Maldives. For background, the Maldives are a remote archipelago located in the Indian Ocean south of India. They're home to some of the world's most spectacular tropical coral reefs, which Tony Foster captured for part of his Exploring Beauty watercolor diaries from the wild journey. But Foster also went to the Maldives to capture another subject for Exploring Beauty, actually nominated by his wife, artist Anne Foster. Over the course of several trips between 2007 and 2010, Tony Foster created these pieces with smaller format watercolor paintings in them. It is Anne Foster's opinion that the Maldives are home to the world's most beautiful sunsets, and so Tony chose these six to depict. These paintings were particularly challenging because Tony had to work quickly since sunsets don't last very long. In typical Foster style, Tony included souvenir elements in the lower portion of the artworks, in this case, a glass tube containing colorful crushed seashells, a sketch of fish from one of his scuba dives, and a handwritten inscription. Now, for today's demonstration, since we've painted some landscapes already, instead of focusing on the obvious subject for these paintings, sunsets, I want to focus on painting seashells inspired by the crushed shells we see here. The three subjects I've selected are light in color, perfect for applications of subtle watercolor layers. Because they're so light, a challenge I'm going to face is making them stand out against the white paper. I'll do this by paying special attention to and highlighting subtle color changes, textures, and imperfections on the shell's surfaces, and by painting in the shadows they cast onto the ground beneath them. If you plan to follow along with this demonstration and are able, get out to a beach and pick up a few shells to use for this exercise. Even partly chipped or otherwise broken shells make lovely subjects when arranged together and painted. Sometimes it's those very imperfections that breathe life into the paintings. Also, Make sure you've seen my materials video to learn what supplies you'll need to follow along with this demonstration. I'll be sticking with a basic kit today. Watercolor paper, a pencil and eraser, water, watercolor paints and brushes, and some paper towel. But you're always welcome to experiment with additional materials. All right, let's get started. So as you can see, the first thing I've done is I've gone ahead and created the drawings for these shells. And I've done them a little bit larger than life so that I have more ability to get detail in there. I've also made sure to render these very lightly because these are light subjects and so at the end I don't want the pencil mark to, to show too strongly through the watercolor. And in some cases I've even gone back and erased, for example here where the cast shadow is to the lower right of the piece. I've erased some of that because I don't want a strong sharp line, I want it to be more diffused and soft. When you're arranging your shells, Choose positions that to you are interesting and have a light source that's consistent. For example, for me, the light is coming from the top left here. So this part up here in all of the shells is going to be the lightest or some of the lightest area. Also to familiarize yourself with your shells, I'd recommend doing a bunch of sketches beforehand, little studies, just getting to know your subject a bit and that way informing too what angle you're going to ultimately choose to do your final drawing from. But it's really helpful to do these little sketches as, as a way of getting to know your shells so that when you go to paint them eventually, you're much more intimately familiar with them. Then, once you've done a bunch of those, you can go to the final drawing on your watercolor paper that will become your painting. So to begin, I'm going to pre-mix some color. We're going to start with this shell here on the left. To me, this is a, a pretty light muted gray, but slightly in the purple, purple brown spectrum. So I'll begin by adding water to these paints that are dry in my palette. And I'm going to mix up some cerulean blue with a little French ultramarine. And we're going to go for some alizarin crimson. So that'll push into the purples. We'll get a uh, pretty vibrant purple and then we'll have to mute that down. So we'll add some of its complement, a yellow, and we can do a yellow ochre because that one is sort of earthy and we're, we're looking for something more earthy. You can see that starting to dull down and becoming a little bit more gray. And since it's impossible to tell the intensity of the color by just looking at what's in the palette, I'm going to do a test, take some of this color that I know has a lot of water in it, so it won't be very intense, but I want to see what it looks like anyways. And look at that, it's very light, but it's getting close to this tone that we're, that we're looking at in the shell. So I might just add a bit more to it to intensify that color. I can always dilute it, so same combination. Cerulean blue, French ultramarine, 
alizarin crimson, and then some yellow ochre. And this looks like a winning combination for this color. But again, color mixing is an art in and of itself. The more you watercolor paint, the more you'll become familiar and become acquainted with how the colors interact, what results combinations produce. There we go. So that looks pretty good. You can see without the reflection there. But this is a little too intense, so I want to start with a pretty light wash. So I'm going to use this corner over here, add some water, and make a much less intense version of this color. I can add some in if I need to. All right. So sometimes I like to use two brushes, one for color mixing. So this will be my color mixing brush, and then another brush for other work such as pre-moistening the page. Right now that's what I'm going to do with this shell is I'm going to take water and let's get rid of this one. I'm going to paint in water just in the areas where the shell is. Not the, sh not the cast shadow, but just the subject itself, just the positive space. And it's sometimes hard to see where the water is because it's transparent. But if you angle your head sideways, you might be able to catch a glare off the, the, the sheen of the water from the light that you're shining onto it. And that's really useful. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally put water outside of your subject, outside of the lines, or otherwise when you add your watercolor paint in, it will run, it will bleed out into those areas. If you do accidentally do that, just make sure to dry it up with your paper towel and keep, and keep the water just inside of the subject. And you want this to be moist, damp, but not completely soaking. If you get it too wet, your pigment won't actually penetrate the paper fibers. It'll just kind of slosh over the top. So you'll know if you've made a mistake because your pigment, your pigment will just kind of float on top. If you did add too much water, let it dry a little bit and, and test it so that it's not, make sure that it's not too shiny looking before you put the pigment in. Okay, so now that I'm wet, I'll take this color that I just mixed up, take a little bit of that. You can see that it's separating a little bit. This French ultramarine is notorious for wanting to separate from other colors. And that's okay, it, it sometimes adds an interesting effect to your pieces, but just something to be aware of. So I'm going to remix that, and then I'll start dropping this in in the areas where I want that color to be more intense and avoid the areas where I want a bit more lightness. Hopefully this should, this should spread throughout. You have to work quickly with this process because if your paper dries from that initial wash you put down, just the water, then you won't get this nice spreading effect. So this part up here, for example, is drier than this part down here. You can see how this is becoming soft in the edge and this one is still hard, but that's okay. I'm just gonna work with what I've got. So this dried a little too quickly, unfortunately, but that's okay. I can still work with it. I'm going to continue to paint in and then I'm going to come back with my, with another brush, a wet brush and a rather a damp brush and just smooth out some of these hard edges. So now I'm going to take this wet, but slightly dried off brush to soften these edges. It's handy to have multiple brushes available. Carefully smoothing this out. And you can see the color is pooling in certain areas uh, where my paper has buckled, and that's okay if that happens. You can sort of direct where that water pools by actually physically picking up the paper and letting gravity do some work for you. So just control where that pool pooling goes, where that droplet goes. More now. I'm trying to maintain a lot of lightness up in this upper left area since that is where the light source is hitting the shell most directly. Okay, I'm going to physically see if I can manipulate some of where this water is pooling. And now it looks like some of the blue has already stained. Some of the colors are more staining than others, so I'm just going to have to go with that. Um, it's usually better not to try to fuss too much over your watercolors and just let your little accidents be part of your piece. But in this case I can do, since it's still wet, I can do a little bit of soaking up a, little bit, a bit of this color and also because we're working with a base layer. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, while this is still damp, I will take some more color and drop it in further to darken this part over here, the lower right where we have a shadow going on. And I'm just sort of dropping this color in, directing a bit, but mostly just dropping. All right, and for now, I think we're gonna let that be. We don't want it to dry completely, so I'm gonna start working on this other shell over here, but I'm gonna have to come back before this dries completely. Clean up this edge a tiny bit. Okay, for this next shell, I'm going to want to mix up 
different color. So I'm gonna let this dry now. Okay, so we've got this mostly dry. You can see that it's dried unevenly based on where I placed water. I placed some down here at the very end, and this part is still shiny. At least I can see that from my angle. But this part up here is a lot more dry, and so I can begin to do some work. What I'm gonna focus on now is, you can see that there's, there's an intense granulation texture that's going on, these little speckles of blue and red. And that's again, the French ultramarine doing its thing. This is the texture that I was referring to that some people love and some people don't really appreciate as much but we're gonna use it in this piece. So, so I'm gonna to try to sculpt a little bit some of the texture on this shell by using a dampened smaller brush and just paying special attention to the textures that are going on here. We have some lightness right along this edge of where this, where this curl happens, this spiral, and then we have these lines radiating from that that curve around the shell and give us a good sense of its contour. So I can pick out some of those by lifting color out gently. This is also a good time to focus on the reflected light that's on this side of the shell here. So there's a, it's a bit lighter here than, than here. This part over here is the darker area. And so I can lift some color out like this with this damp brush and I'm cleaning it in between lifts so that I'm able to get more color out. I might even switch to a bigger brush for this part. This is subtle work, but it will pay off in the long run and start to help you define the details and the texture in the shell. Make sure that you're, you're doing these contour lines um, according to what you're seeing. Really try to match that curve and those angles because you want to convey 3D-ness with this. And if, if your lines are too flat or if they're not curved enough and they're not really looking what, like what's in the shell, then it's going to start looking a little bit unnatural. Touch up this edge. And the nice thing about light subjects like these shells is that they don't actually require a whole lot of pigment. You're using minimal pigment and letting the paper and the page do a lot of the work for you. So, depending on the subject and the way that you work, sometimes these, these pieces can go pretty quickly. You can see that this effect is subtle, but it's working. It's giving me more of the shell pattern that I'm looking for. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And now I might even take some of my original pigment and add in some more darks. Again, thinking, focusing on texture. So creating some dark lines that contrast a bit with these lighter ones that I've created. You may need to let your piece dry further in order to get those crisp enough. But right now what I'm doing is just accentuating some of the dark areas. And I think I need a bit more brown so I'm gonna take some of this burnt sienna, try that out, very bright on its own, but in small amounts it could be tastefully incorporated into this piece. Tiny brush, piece mostly dry, just adding some little imperfections, kind of a contrast to the cool blue purple scheme we have going with some of this, this warmer brown. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one for now because it's in a good spot. Let this dry and then we'll, we'll go on top and do more detail and a little bit more darkness. So now I wanna focus on these two shells and I'm gonna work on them a little bit simultaneously because they share a lot of the same colors. So for this, I'm gonna have to mix up a totally different foundational wash color. Take my brush, create a little pool of water up here and I'm gonna use primarily this ochre, this yellow ochre. Bring my shell out for reference again. So yellow ochre, like with the other color mixing, I wanna dull this down a bit, mute it down because it's too bright on its own. So I'll add some of its complement. This is kind of an orangey yellow, so we can add sort of a bluey purple to it. Let's say French ultramarine's a good candidate. And by just adding a little bit, not turning it blue, I'm able to make it much more earthy, much more muted, like this. We're looking for a base color, a very light base color for both of these shells since they seem very light, but we need a cream or something to go first. So that seems pretty good, closer to this one than to this one really. So I'll create separate batches. For this one here, I'm gonna mute this even further, take some more of my blue, because this base color that we're seeing it's pretty gray, so I'm adding a lot more blue. 
a lot more of this French ultramarine blue. And it's not looking green again because this is more of an orangey yellow. And so the complement of orange is blue. We're getting gray instead. That's looking better. I'm gonna add a bit more blue. Let's try that. Looking pretty good. Maybe a touch of Indian red. Let's see what that does. At some point you start splitting hairs. That looks pretty good to me. So we're gonna work with that as a foundation layer. So now I'll leave this brush aside and I'll take another brush, make sure that it's clean, and then do the same process as I had started with for the first shell. I'm gonna paint in water. And this time I'll take it a little more heavy handedly with the water because I don't want it to dry as quickly as my last shell did before I was able to get the watercolor in there. Worst case, you put too much water and then you just have to wait till it dries for the right moisture level that you need. Okay, so I can see that this is nice and shiny throughout. Got a bit too much water on the right end right here, so I'm drying off my brush and using my thirsty brush to mop up some of this water that's pooled here. So I don't need so, so much. And then I'm gonna wait till the rest of this dries just a tiny bit so that it's not as shiny. I can tell that there's not as much water sitting on the surface. So now I will take the color that I mixed up originally, this ochre yellow and French ultramarine with a tad of Indian red, do another test for intensity, and then start to drop this in into the areas in my shell where I see those colors. Made a little mistake here, but that's okay. Clean that up with some damp paper towel. And now I'll clean my brush off just a little bit, keep some color in there, and then pat it dry and use a more diluted form of this mixture to come in and add some more color to certain areas, but a lot more subtly. And again, we're just kind of underpainting. We're creating a foundation upon which we will build in general, we'll be working from wet to dry and from lighter colors to darker colors, more intense colors. So I'm doing all of this wet on wet work right now. So I noticed that there's a bit of color right here. It's kind of a reddish, and I think I can get something approximate with some alizarin crimson, just a, a hint of it. So I'll take just a tad, and before this dries too fully, add a little bit in like that. Let that dry and see what, see what it turns into. So I'll leave that be for now. We'll work on this other shell. So for this one, I'll mix up a slightly different color it's gonna be a base of that yellow ochre again, but I like the way that this burnt sienna was, was looking when it was by itself. It seems to match this color pretty well. Um, so I'll start it over here and we'll do, like before, yellow ochre. This time I'll add the burnt sienna and I'll just take it from here directly since I'm not really gonna use this for the other shell. Do a test. Looks pretty close. And I'm looking especially at areas like this where I get a very faint hint of color. Um, these, these line patterns right here are very intense, obviously, but I'll put those in at the end because they're much more crisp. I just want to work on the under layer right now, the foundation. So I've got a good color. Like before, I'm going to set this color aside and take a clean brush and paint water into this shell taking my time to do this. So now we'll take this color, make sure that it's diluted enough because right here it's fairly strong. So I'll take some of this out of the brush, add a touch of water, test it over here, and that's much better start to drop this in, in the places where I'm seeing it. A bit more water. I want to make sure to leave enough white on here uh, because the shell is primarily 
very light, very cream colored. So something like that. Good foundation. So now we're going to return to this first shell. We have a good light foundation going on, but I now want to focus more on refining details and intensifying the darks. Even though they're minimal and they're subtle, punching out those darks will really bring the piece to life and create more of an illusion of 3D-ness. I'll begin by rehydrating some of this old color that I'd made and by remixing it because, as I was saying, that French ultramarine loves to separate. Got that gray once again. I'm going to use this to accentuate some of the texture on the shell while focusing on areas that could use some more darkness. Again, really capitalizing on these lines because they help convey contour as well as the texture on the shell. Take my small brush for more details. A little bit of lifting right here when I see light, lightness happening. I'll also use this small brush to start adding in more texture to this area here that I've ignored just a little bit. But the idea here is I'm building up slowly, gradually in layers of watercolor. And darken right in here. And some further darkening. Okay, I'll let that dry before we do the final details and then the cast shadow. We'll move on to this piece here. We've got a good first layer going. Looks like it got very dark in some areas, but at this point I can't really control that, so I'm just gonna go with it. I'll take this brush, rehydrate my watercolor, and just start to intensify certain areas a bit more. I don't want this to be too wet. Deepen the, the, the dark shadows where appropriate. Also start to accentuate some of the textures. And then progressively adding a little bit more water to my brush just to lighten the color that I'm putting down so that I can create more and more subtle details. We have these bands that are going this way along the shell, but then there's also, of course, the lines that are going this way texturally. So I'm trying to get a bit of both of those without making it look too much like a, a checkerboard. So subtlety is key. Maybe switch to a thinner brush as well, smaller brush, to be able to get finer details, especially in this part of the shell right here where we have lots of texture. Patience and observation is key. Really looking carefully at your subject and trying to pluck out those imperfections, any little cracks or crevices. Those are what's going to bring your shell alive. Further darkening some areas. And again, because we're using such a light subject, this is going pretty quickly. You know, we only had to do one layer of foundation color. We didn't have to double up, do multiple glazing layers. And now we're just adding texture, and focusing on those imperfections. That's pretty much all there is to it. 
letting the white of the page kind of shine through and do a lot of the work for us. We'll have a touch of straight ochre and some warmer highlights to this. It's subtle, but the warmth does help bring out some of this color. Switch to a bigger brush to get some of this as well. Since I'm covering broader areas now, you can see that red that we had put in previously really faded, which is good. It's keeping it subtle. And now I'm going to actually take some of the color from our first shell because it's a nice, warm, neutral blue purple. We have some of those colors in this shell. Um, especially in the parts that are in shadow. And so I can take that and just repurpose it. I'm making sure to squint my eyes every so often as I look at this shell um, so that I can tell where the really, really extreme dark parts are and then make sure that my piece matches when I squint. If my piece looks too light by comparison, then I just I don't have enough value intensity yet. Seem to have some pretty strong darks right down here. Actually, let me switch to a smaller brush since it's a fine detail that I'm adding right against this rim here. I'm going to take a bit more of the French ultramarine by itself, mute it down with this previous color, and then start to insert that into some of the really extreme dark spots. We're going to leave that one for now, and we will go to this other shell. So for this one, we need to add the shadows to this right side of the shell. So for that, I'm going to use the same color that I was using for that first shell, which is again a nice muted gray. But I, I think I'm going to add a touch of this color, the, pre, the color we'd mixed for the shell, to it um, to warm it up just slightly because I don't, I don't want it so, so blue, more neutral gray pretty neutral. So now I can drop that in, paying a bit of attention to you know, the features that are on this side of the shell. They're very, everything's very smooth. There aren't a lot of hard edges. Take some water, kind of fade. I don't want to, anything too strong, and sharp and defined. We've got a lot of undulations on the surface of the shell. Even if it looks like it's sort of stair case stacked, there's also some other movement going on. And so I want to pay attention to that, these, these little bumps. Take some more blue. You know what, it does feel like it needs a bit more blue now. Drop that in up here and down here. some water, just a damp brush without much pigment on it, start to fuzz a little bit, especially fuzz along this top edge because that is a smooth turn that that shell makes. It's not an abrupt shift, so I want that to be smooth. And let's squint at the piece and squint at my subject. Looks like I'm getting along well. I'll take a bit of ochre by itself, maybe mix it with this burnt sienna that I had before, and start to add some warmth back into this section. Something like that. Take my blue again, and on areas that are still dry, I'll just intensify that shadow where needs needs be. 
that's okay. We'll let this dry and we'll continue to refine. Um, in the meantime, I can work on this section. So I'll take this burnt sienna and ochre combination that I'd made, put some of this in other parts of the shell that need a bit more. So like right here, down here, as well as some of these textural lines that have a lot of faded bits. And before that dries, wipe off my brush, moisten it, and just fade these a little bit so they're not so sharp going for that very aqueous kind of feel. You just want smooth tones. Okay. And then a little bit more of that just the tip of the brush and start to indicate some of the lines that are going cross contour like this. It has to be in the areas that are dry already, otherwise they won't show. Let's, wait. Let's leave that for now. We'll go back to this show. So for this show, we're pretty much at the very end now. We're gonna add in just the, the final details and intensify some of those really dark areas once more. So for that, I see a bunch of speckles of more of a browny red, rusty color going on. So I think I'm gonna capitalize on that. So we'll take, I think the Indian red, I'll mix over here, I'm using a very small brush because we're, we're working in small detail now. I've got this Indian red, maybe add a tiny bit of ochre to it, yellow ochre. Use a brush that isn't too, too wet. And just basically come in and, and start adding some really fine details. These details will make all the difference. A small little brush like this can do wonders for, for getting in very close and creating very fine accents. So if you don't have one of these, um, it's definitely worth investing in one, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of little nature illustrating like this. I really like them. I'll dilute this red with some water. Move that over so you can see. And we'll do some more. This is, has to be very subtle. But just adding a little bit of color, a little bit of warmth to some of these areas. Remember not to press too hard or to layer too much water and over the shell and then start brushing it because you might accidentally pick up some of the layers from underneath. You don't want to do that. Got a little drop of water right here. No problem. There we go. All right, and I think I'm pretty much done with that shell. I could futz with it more, but for now I think I'm, I'm happy and uh, I'm gonna work on the cast shadow. Before I do that, let's continue. Let's finish all the shells and then move into cast shadow terrain. So this one's looking pretty good. I could spend more time on the details. Um, I'm going to intensify the darks like I just did with my last shell. We'll, we'll do that by grabbing some of the same colors we have and just using a very fine brush get in there. A couple other spots. all these very delicate cracks going on on the shell's surface as it's sort of exfoliating layers especially in this part right here and I just love that detail so I'm going to try to use this really fine brush and carefully patiently make my way across the surface and emphasize some of those same over here in these sections there's lots of little corrugations and cracks and crannies going on and so it's nice if I can focus on some of them and emphasize them a bit. And there's only, there's a lot you can do definitely, but sometimes it's just helpful to do a couple of these marks to convey that the rest are there without overdoing it. And you can also just try to estimate what some of these marks are like by, by creating patterns or textures with the brush. Uh, sometimes I like to use a little stipple effect, just kind of a chaotic effect, little movement. 
especially in these areas, it would be useful. So, something like this. And at the risk of overworking, I'm just going to continue adding a little bit more detail. But I think I'm pretty much done at this point. I could call it done at least, especially for the purposes of this video. You know, you could add in maybe a few more blues, uh, create some more distinction between the warmer yellow tones going on in here. Actually, in fact, I, I will do just that because I set it, add some cerulean, a very light layer of cerulean to this section right here. But otherwise, I think I should call this done. Okay. Let's move on to the last piece. We basically got the, the darks and lights in there. Actually, I missed one of the darks up in this upper left corner, which is a little counterintuitive because that's where our lightest area is supposed to be based on how the light is shining on the shell. But you gotta draw and paint what you see, not what you think or know you see. You know, you trust your eyes more than your brain on these matters. Okay, something like that. So for this final color, we're gonna do that same mixture of yellow ochre with burnt sienna. And this one I'll, I'll keep a little more intense, at least for a bit, for parts of it. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of build up in layers. So I'm gonna start with a actually a bit more of a diluted bit of this, put in the contours. And now I'll wet my brush, clean it off, wet it, and then start to fuzz a bit around the areas where it's a lot more diffused. Emphasize these cross contour lines. I don't have to do all of those lines, but it helps to do some. And while I'm at it, I'm going to work in some lines in the shadowed area. Okay, and now I can go a bit stronger. So I'll take the more intense bit of this color that I'd mixed up and go over really carefully these lines trying to be very thin because they are very thin where they are intense. I can always thicken them up, up if I need to after. This is tricky because you want to show something very stark, very strong and defined, but there's also elements of it that need to be very aqueous and diffused and less defined. So it's a good challenge. Another way to have done this would have been to do more work while in the wet and wet section with these bits of uh, diffused sections and then layered the, the sharp clean line over it, the intense dark line over it afterwards. Dark color in here for more of these details. is lift out some color some of these ridges so fine brush clean and then do a bit of intentional extra scraping to lift off some of the color that was placed down underneath make them slightly lighter hmm. didn't do a whole lot but it all adds up okay and then we'll do a bit more of this this yellow to emphasize these rings, they can be blue. You were doing shadows, so when you're working this small, it's hard. You gotta be very detailed and very patient and work only with the tip of the brush. But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna go a bit faster. Some blue, a little bit of this yellow. You know, this part got a little too muddied for my liking, but watercolor can be kind of hit or miss and you're learning in the process. So next time I'll do better. So for the shadow for this one, we'll start by mixing a dark color. I'll take French Ultramarine, my go-to dark. I also like using blues as a base for shadows a lot. And we'll add some of our same colors as before, maybe a little Indian red. Make some, let's make something that's like a blue purple. Dull that down a bit with some yellow ochre. more gray a little bit more gray so a little more yellow ochre mix that well and 
good. Maybe a little more gray because we don't want it to resemble this gray too much. A lot more yellow ochre. All right, now it no longer really resembles a purple. All right, that looks pretty good. And I do want to intensify the, this though a little bit. So I'm going to do the same recipe again. Blue. We'll add a couple layers of that. So I see a bit of reddish in the shadow. My first layer, I might mix with a bit of, of this Indian red just to get that going. So I'm going to leave my brush for now that I've mixed my color up with. And I'm going to take another brush. I haven't used this flat brush yet, so I'll try that. And just like before, when we started, we're going to, I'm going to wet the paper. And I want to be careful just to wet the area where the shadow is in and not get, and not get any of the shell. But I'm going to do one more thing now. So I have my edge of my shadow. I'm going to take a bit of water and go, go further out than that edge on purpose to give my shadow some room to flow, to grow. Because I don't want a hard edge, as I was saying. Make sure that this isn't too wet. I can even blow on it a little bit or shake it just a bit to get some of that water out. And then I'll take my other brush and starting with the bit of Indian red that I had added in, just drop that in where I want it. You can see it spreads, but it's kind of a controlled spread. I'm trying to get it just into the boundaries of my original shadow marks. I'll take the full mixture, beautiful diffused shadow. It's pretty fuzzy right now, but that's okay. When I do my next one, I'll wait till this dries a little bit, and then when I do my next pass over it, I'll go darker, and I'll also be a little more crisp with it. For now, this is exactly what we're looking for. So let's wait for this to dry. And this is looking dry enough now. Let's add our second layer. Same thing, but now we should have a bit more control over how far that water spreads, because it's much more dry. And using the same color, we'll layer up, make it a bit darker this time. Follow that guideline more carefully. Still wet, maybe a little too wet. I'm using a slightly dried brush to pick up a, a bit around the edge, so I don't, so it's not so crisp. You want to be careful not to pick up too much color. And we'll do one final pass after this is dried. In the meantime, though, I'm going to start preparing the shadow color for this one. And really, we're going to use this color we'd mixed before. So I think this is the French ultramarine with yellow ochre mix. And I want to deepen that, intensify that. So more French ultramarine, more yellow ochre. We want like a deep, dark yellow. And this is, again, because some of the shadow that we're seeing under this shell here in the middle has a, a yellow tinge to it. But if you squint your eyes and look at that and break, break down what that color is, there's really not a whole lot of yellow. It's pretty dark. So one way to do that is to layer yellow and then layer another color on top, a darker color. I'm going to mix something that's closer to what I see there and try that. Oh, before I forget, first thing we're going to do is lay down some water. This time I'm going to stick a bit more to the guidelines. Not, I don't want it to spread out as much like this. And before I put my color in, I'm going to wait for this to dry like before. The color for this shell will be similar, but I think a little bit, we'll use some more of that yellow initially. So I might as well go ahead and put water in here too. Now this bottom one has dried, shoot, maybe too much. I'm going to re-wet some of that. And let's try now. A bit more French ultramarine. Intensify this a bit more. Damp brush, get that edge to be a little less crisp. A bit more color, and then we'll let this dry and we'll add a second layer. So let's get to this one which also has dried already. So maybe not a good idea to try to tackle two at the same time. It's just better to be patient and do one. Get the water back in here. 
same thing take our color and drop it in I really want to try this yellow shadow which is going to be a challenge but let's see we might as well try so we'll take some of this color and put it in right down here where I see this yellow kind of blooming and this should dry lighter than it is right now see if that has any interesting effect maybe a little bit in this one as well just because we can the shadows are looking good these these shells are starting to pop off the page a little bit we need to darken this one and some bits of these as well let's do another pass down on this one so for that I'm gonna take some more French ultramarine and, and mix it with this concoction that I had previously so more in the blues now than it, than it used to be let's go for it so darkening selectively in parts that are really deep or where the shadows are, are, are strongest a bit more of this dark preparation And use a clean damp brush again just to clean up some edges if you need to make sure you don't introduce any water or you're going to muddy up and backwash into your shadow all right this is an interesting effect that's happened over here we still got some wetness but i could start to add some darkness to the other side at least and, and work my way in so let's see french ultramarine again yellow ochre a little more yellow. Let's try that. And a strong dark shadow like this will provide contrast to the light form of the shell and really help to pop it out of the page. So I don't want it to be completely black, but I want it to be strong. And I can achieve that strength through application of, of glazing of layers like this. And wait for this section to dry a bit more before I put more color over it but like with the one down here I'll take a damp brush and just do some cleanup it can even be a smaller brush so let's come back to this one we can use some of the same color, especially because all these pieces are on the same page. It'll be nice for them to have a bit more harmony in terms of color. So I'll use some of the same shadow just to, to tie these more together. And also because all I'm looking for right now is dark to create darkness. So I add one more layer of darkness where I see an extreme shadow under this shell here. Something like that. even take a little bit of this color using the tip of my brush I feel inspired to put some on this line here very carefully okay quick touch up on this edge let's go back to this one same thing grab my color this time I'll start over here and work my way across you want to get the shadows shape just right it, it's so easy for them the shadows to ruin the piece if they're not drawn right so pay attention to the shape that it's making on your shell and really try to get that Final pass. A couple more areas with an extreme darkness really help the piece float off the page, like so. Okay, so those look pretty good to me. The more I stare at it, of course, the more I'm going to find things that I want to touch up. 
because that's just the way that I work and I'm always fighting that perfectionist mindset, which honestly a lot of the time works against me. A lot of the time simple is just so much better, but I'm going to leave it there. I hope you had fun with this painting. If you're planning on tackling more shells in the future, the principles for painting light colored subjects will be the same. Focus on imperfections and shadows to really make your paintings come alive. The same also applies to other light colored things like bones, bird eggs, light colored flowers, even marble sculptures if you go paint at a museum. Use the same approach for those kinds of subjects. Oh, and here's a tip. If your subjects are really tiny, then try to paint them larger than life so it's easier to include more detail. If you liked this episode, please give this video a like and subscribe to the Foster's channel. The other videos in this series are available here and also on the Foster website at www.thefoster.org. Thank you for watching.